This is our first proper episode. We're going to put this on YouTube so people can Excuse have... Excuse me to you. I'm a little under the weather today, so <laughs> if you hear me doing this, just know I'm okay. All right. Um, We should talk about what's been going on while we've been too busy to podcast. Why have you been too busy to podcast? Uh, it's been a busy summer. Summer's over now, though. So I got a little bit of downtime, but it's been a busy summer. Mm-hmm. Same here. What have you been up to? What'd you do? You go first. Mm, I met Usher this summer. Yep. Open for Money Long and Trey Songs. I played Afro Nation on the main stage. That was cool. I played uh, Blavity House Party Music Festival in Nashville. And like 10 other shows here in Detroit. And guess what, guys? I played a show with the orchestra. I had this sweater on. I met Usher. You met I Usher. Gravity. I was there to open up for Money Long and Trey Song. You were. You were on stage. I did Afro Nation. In two ways. In two ways. It was a hell of a summer. Hell of a. And you've been uh, passing inspections at your up and coming yeah, new venture, Pizza Cat, Max, Ann Arbor. Oh, y'all. Listen. <laughs> Listen, y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. This is my first time saying this on camera. I'm so invested, broke right now. Mm. It's amazing. Talk about what it means to be invested, broke. Are there different brands of broke? Um, It's one thing to be broke because you're lazy. Right. I've been watching this meme on Instagram, and they say, if you went to sleep broke, you should have never went to sleep. <laughs> um, you you agree? But mm, kind of almost. Kind of almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm really I'm really about that. Yeah. That bag, you know what I'm saying? Like and the older I get, I understand the different type of bags and I also understand who tries to show their bag and yeah. who really has the bag. So Invested broke is so different than lazy broke. Are there any other types of broke that you can be you that inve- you have been? You got invested broke, you got lazy broke. Um, no, I think it's I think it's a two. It's just those two. Yeah, it's invested broke and it's lazy broke. Like an invested know? broke is you're taking risks, yeah. and those risks involve you putting some money up. Correct. Lazy broke is you're not going to get it. You just don't because have you, the, just you just don't, don't have, have the drive. The drive. The yeah. energy to want more. Yeah. You know? And I always want more. Have you ever been lazy broke ever in your existence? Um, I think I've been lazy broke before, mm-hmm. but my backing was so amazing. Like the support you had from your family? The support I had from my That's family beautiful. that I never knew um, that I was actually broke. I have a different type of broke that I feel like people on my side experience, but I also don't want to cut your story off about how invested broke you are. So maybe we can stick a pin in it. Let's talk about how your side. uh, I feel like. Hold on. Can I say this? Yeah. It don't sound wild. Yeah. Um, You say it again first so I can say it after you. I said I feel like there's another type of broke that my side experiences that you didn't mention. So is it like my side get money, your side? Um, sometimes we are less, we don't value money. Like oh my, that's oh, not we, the, we value the, it for sure. typically the driving force for a creative is not getting rich. Um, Quincy Jones said in a, he was talking about a creative space. He said in a recording session, essentially when money comes up, God leaves the room. And this is Quincy Jones. You don't come with them quotes. No, Quincy Jones, quote. Quincy Jones is like for a, a artist, a musician. He's he's our he's our hero, and so if he said that, we believe it. And so we don't. Money is never the driving force because we don't feel like we can create well if we're doing it just to make a dollar. But I feel like we also have something on our side, which is just like scared broke. And it is the kind of broke that you can be when you convince yourself that, oh, that's not a good opportunity for me, or that's not a good audience for me, or, oh, that's not, that's not fly enough for me. Like, we'll um, get so high above it sometimes. It's a fly. It's a fly in here. It's, it's, it's fucking killing me. Yeah, we have. Go ahead. Keep talking about Quincy. And, and um, 
But sometimes it's a, like it's an excuse to not dig your heels into what you're trying to do like well enough to actually like make some money doing it. And what I can definitely say about my summer is that I made more money as an artist than I ever have in my life. So I feel like I leaned a lot more into the currency side of this conversation. No, 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 no. Thanks to you. Okay, give me my credit. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank I you. always give you a credit. You got to say no, 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 no. I wasn't even done. So, like, this was a great year to, like, we did stuff like created, like, a, for a 20-minute show with a guitarist but no band. This is the rate for a 30-minute with a full band. This is, like, we ran all of that down and were able to negotiate some some beneficial situations. And but also... The buzz was there, too. Yeah. The buzz was there because I think we had a strong online campaign around the song where I was very visible. And so, you know, there were shows that I asked to get on. Like, oh, no, this is a moment in the city in, in R&B. You can't, you can't leave me out. And some stuff I didn't make a dollar off of. Some stuff I lost money on. And those was the same doors where I had experienced for years. Yeah. You know what made me like pull back from the industry DJing is for one, what you may think is a show where you can show your craft. Yeah. But on my end, I know that these niggas only doing this for the money. They don't give a fuck who performing as long as this bitch fill up. And in many ways, I feel really out of my element in environments like that because up until this year, I've only really intentionally perform for like focus audiences. So if I thought that an audience would like talk too much while I'm singing or just kind of like misunderstand and undervalue the art, I would be like, no. Whereas this year, I think my approach I changed. Her, get the bag. Well, my approach I also. I inside of a barn. Get the bag. Well, six we, people, 16 we still, people, we still, 16,000 people. We still have standards, but I would say where I balanced that with craft is challenging myself to be like, how do you win this crowd over? How do you get their attention? How do you change them from passive listeners to fans over the course of four songs. And that forced me to get better. That forced me to fix tempos that forced me to mix a little sexy red in here and there, you know? So it was a balance, I think of, uh, the value of craft and currency. I think I'm deeply in that balance right now. I'm eager for Ann Arbor to open. Yeah. That's kind of like how I am too. Um, it's special. Kind of like how my life is set up. My life is like real, like it's always a wild moment approaching. It's always a wild moment. So like you always have something to look forward to. Yeah, that's like, that's cool. Got the Remy Martin. Let the DJ get a shot coming up. Yep. Ann Arbor I'm all, opening. I'm almost done with the flyer. Yeah, been working on it for about three weeks now. So. <laughs> Sorry. That's actually, I think, a really beautiful way to avoid getting depressed. Sometimes I feel like when people get depressed it's because they don't have anything to look forward to. So I think that's a that's a valid way to approach life. Like I'm always going to set it up where I have something to look forward to. I think when I get down, it's because I don't have anything to look forward to. So to people watching this right now, what's the point of our podcast? This is like a pilot episode right now. Yeah. What is the point of our podcast when we say craft, currency? Um... For me, on a more philosophical level, I feel like what's special about me and you is that we are two sides of, you know, the same coin in that we're both very ambitious, both very righteous people, both very driven and loved, but from two very different, like, energies and angles. And I think it's, I think it's important to highlight that, like, you can have a beautiful and harmonious relationship with the person that's different than you. And sometimes those differences are the key to really unlock your life. And that's, to me, a conversation worth having. To say philosophical? Yeah. In my philosophical opinion view, um, <laughs> Charity is much smarter than me. Um, Don't say that. No, I'm just talking about smarter-wise as when it comes to... You think I'm book smarter than you? Book smarter as when it comes to literature. 
as okay. when it comes to certain things vocabulary. Like that. Vocabulary. You're extremely smart. Probably, if not the smartest individual that I've met. Um, top five. Top five for sure. <laughs> you know. That's so nice to feel like that about yeah. somebody. That's nice. Um, and somebody I'm, I'm I go with. I date. You know. What I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a very like you know like. Hey, I may not know the answer to that, but let me go get my girl. She about to talk your head off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's stuff like that. that like, And as you grow up, you realize it's different ways to show off. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and you ways. have to show off, though, because yeah. that's that's just you. It's not just me. That's the old me, to be honest with you. No, I think you, you ha- you're a Leo, and it's not negative that you want to show off, but you want to show off things that are of true value to you now. So it might not just be diamonds and cars. It might be... You know, showing off your growth on an intellectual level or the kind of person you partner with and how that challenges you and pushes you. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm in a position of life of growth and it's, it's coming fast. Yeah. And it's it's not taking a day off from not letting me grow. Yeah. And I thank God for that. And Does I, this um, relationship push that further for you? Because it definitely pushes that for me. I'm on a podcast. Right. Or craft or currency. Like. Right. I told I was talking to my therapist about something that me and you were dealing with. And I was like, man, I just feel like me and him have so much work to do. And it's hard not to resent that sometimes. But then by the end of the session, because I always find a silver lining, I said that my relationship forces me to have to kind of like clean up under the couch. And I find things and being like, in the ways that you push me, I find other areas that also can elevate. And so it it betters the whole woman, and I just think that's I think that's a special conversation to be had around that kind of dynamic. Everybody don't choose it. Everybody ain't able, but it's made me better. So. All right, cool. So before we uh, get up out of here and in episode one, let's go. Let's play our game three for three. How? And we're just gonna do names right now. Okay, cool. You throw me a name out. I'm gonna tell you who it is. I'm gonna throw you a name out. Okay, who is? Sasha Obama. I ain't that crazy now. Come on. That's uh Michelle and Brock's daughter. Yep. I um, started off light. Okay. All right, cool. Um who is YFN Lucci? Um, I think he's somebody connected to no YFN. I was about to say the YSL <coughs> trial, but I think that's the wrong crew. I don't know who he is. I think it's a rapper. Sounds like a rapper. <laughs> mm, okay, I'll give you that one. It's on you. Who is Nat Turner? <laughs> Nothing to do with Nat King Cole. <laughs> Nothing to do with Tina Turner. <laughs> Just move on. This is crazy. Are you kidding me? Pass. Pass. He led a slave revolt in. Uh, uh, see, listen, man, you gonna have all. Um, I I don't know. Let me let me. I'm just. I didn't choose somebody that people from my side wouldn't know though. Like I didn't go super niche. So. Okay. All right. Um. Who is? Uh, it's not a good one. It's not on my side. I got mine. So come on. All right. Who is? Um. Who is Allen Iverson? Come on. Are you kidding me? All right, who, I don't is, know who, Alan Iverson who is? Who is the glove? He's a cultural. Who icon. is the glove? The glove? Yes. A football player? <laughs> <laughs> who is he? <laughs> who is Who is Gary Payton? A basketball player. What's his nickname? I don't know. I don't know. The glove. Oh, <laughs> I thought you moved on to somebody else. Who is? Can I go? Yeah, but don't give me no hard one. It's not hard. Who is Tim Walls? Not the rock singer. Not related. Oh my God. Let me to tell you. Tim Walls. Tim Walls. W A L Z. I definitely don't know. I never, never heard nobody with no last name of that. He's running with Kamala as vice president. I'm supposed to know that. <laughs> I'm supposed to know that. Name me one Blade Ice Wood song. Um, Boss Up and Get This Money. Give me another one. 
I hate that you just put me on the spot like this in front of all. And Boss Me Gets Money is not the name of the song. Name of the song. Boy, is... would you? All right, cool, but still give me another one. I don't know. And I'm not going to pretend to know. Give me a Black Ice What album. You know I can't do that. What group did Black Ice What belong to? If I get this wrong, I'm going to get stoned. Was it either the Cheddar Boys or the East Side Boys? Not the East Side Boys. He's from the West Side. All of this is getting cut. <laughs> All of this is staying. Do you want me to do this to you? Yeah, come on. Give me one. <laughs> and, I'm a, and, and, it's, and it's gone. Excuse my expression, y'all. It's going to fuck you up because I'm going to know who it is. Which American president is responsible for the Emancipation Proclamation in which the slaves in the Confederate States were freed? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Come on. It froze. <laughs> it wasn't Trump. <laughs> I'm out. done. Come out. It wasn't Trump. It wasn't uh, Barack. It wasn't Clinton. It wasn't Bush. What was the question again? Which president is responsible for the Emancipation Proclamation in which the slaves were freed? Was it Kennedy? <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. For more episodes of Craft or Currency. Was it Kennedy? <laughs> Abraham. <gasps> Abraham who? Lincoln. Lincoln. Okay, okay, okay. DJ, Kennedy was the president, like, recently. Like, there was no Kennedy? slaves when Kennedy was the Kennedy, president. Kennedy, what, Kennedy? John Kennedy that was assassinated? John Ooh, F. Kennedy? I... That was assassinated, like, right before Martin Luther King was assassinated? Ooh, since I, this is the 60s. My dad was living. Ooh, since, My dad was living ooh, when, since, when Kennedy was ooh, killed. It was still slavery then. Nuh-uh. You ain't doing this.